Welcome back, everyone. How's it going? I know that most of my friends, well, a lot of my friends are at Blade Show. And obviously, I am not at Blade Show. Uh, and so I figured what I would do is just run through some of the knives in my collection. And all of these are ones that I own, uh, that I've either bought or were gifted to me or whatever. I own everything that's out here on the table right now, and it's super zoomed out just to kind of give you a an idea of what I'm going to run through. And I'll zoom in here in just a minute. I got a couple of watches, got a flashlight, you know, a couple things, right? And we'll talk about most of these things. I don't know if we'll get through all of them because I don't want to make this video too terribly long. But I figured we'd do it like Blade Show, right? You guys are walking around. Well, you guys are watching this video, I hope. But... They, the people that are at Blade are walking around table to table and they're seeing kind of a spread like this and they're picking them up and they're checking them out and they're talking to the makers and things like that. So I figured I would just spend a few minutes and try to run through some of these much like you would at Blade Show or any other knife show really and just kind of show off some of the stuff that I have, talk about it for a minute, set it down and pick up something else. So we'll zoom back to like normal view and we'll just go through some of these ones that are here in my collection and we won't spend a lot of time. I've done videos, full videos on all of these. I am 99% sure. And some of these, yeah, they could be for sale. And what I'll do is I'll mention it's for sale and then I'll put some pricing down in the description on the few that are for sale. How's that sound? Okay. So let's just dive right in. I don't even know where to start, really. So let's start with this CKF Ratata. I got this years ago when I first started collecting. Great knife. Has that nice deep belly, kind of a bird's beak kind of tip. Runs on bearings. Super awesome with a Timascus clip. This gets carried a lot. It really does. It feels great in the hand, super thin, and just kind of a fun one. So the CKF Ratata. Honest EDC Pocket Ryu. These aren't for sale yet. I'm working with Joe, trying to get him to sell them. I don't know what the holdup is, but... The Pocket Ryu. This was a collaboration between uh, Shark Nivco and Honest EDC, Joe Corolla, to make these um, as a production version of the uh, Ryu that are very elusive handmade customs. Scrolling down the table, let's just jump around here and we go with the Zelos Swordfish with the Timascus case. And this one, let's zoom all the way in on. Beautiful black sand dial, full Timascus case. The whole case is made out of Timascus. And then hand heat treated to bring out that color by Elshin, the owner of Zelos. So very cool watch. I did a full video on this one because this one was really special. It took me a while to get because I missed the drop but I was able to snag this one from Elshin and it's number 30 of 30. So this one's pretty cool. I love it. I may get a different strap, but all in all, it's a great watch. Flashlight, this is a Olight UV light. So it shoots out ultraviolet, which is great for charging up the loom on either this Tag Heuer or the Zelos. I mean, the UV light just totally blasts it. And I'll kill the light here in just a second and you'll see the loom on both of these is really killer. It's a very cool, uh, just a cool light. It's like 35 bucks, something like that. Totally fun and cool to play with, okay? Don't even know where to start here, guys. How about the Midgard's Messer Viking? 
This is an absolute beast. Not quite as big of a beast as the Peacemaker here, but we'll get to that. These are really awesome. The Little Viking just came out, uh, and I think mine shipped on Monday, just a few days ago from Germany. So as soon as I get that, I will do a full video on the Little Viking and uh, obviously compare this one with it when I do that video so that you can see how much littler it is. All right, let me see here. Todd Fisher Sr. Archangel. Got this on the secondary market from a good friend. We become good online friends, if you will. All handmade. This is one of the early models. It's just awesome. Uh, I got a few scratches on it. Those are mine. Some of this wear around the pocket clip was from the previous owner. This is definitely mine. The rivet on your jeans in the pocket, as your jeans get worn, that rivet kind of comes through the material. And yeah, messed up the finish on this Archangel. I cried a little bit when that happened. But it was a used knife already. Now it's just one of my truly carried a lot EDC knives because it's already scratched up. So what do I care? Right? Eric Kramer Reaper. This is one of the first, I mean, this is like by far the first custom knife I'd ever bought. Uh, and I bought it from Eric directly at the California Custom Knife Show years ago. Um, has an iron wood backspacer, which is totally cool. I had to buy it. And it's so smooth. It's like glassy smooth. It's just, oh, I love it. And Eric was awesome, awesome to work with and deal with because uh, there was a little problem. So I did send it back to him. He did some rework on it. The detent was super light. So he kind of drilled that out, put a bigger detent ball and uh, made it perfect. So we kept talking about doing a fixed blade to match and we just never pulled the trigger. So yeah, awesome knife. I love it. I carry this one quite a lot as well. Okay, I'm going to set some of these off to the sides because I just can't remember what I've touched. Old Dominion Knife Works, EDC Cleaver. I got this from a viewer. We made a trade deal. Pretty cool knife. Odd, unusual. I don't carry it a lot. This one, eh, I might be interested in selling this one. So this is possible for sale. I'll put a price down in the description once I figure out what I might charge for this. Um, but yeah, very cool. Casey does some amazing work. So it's always great to handle his knives. I'm going to put that back here on the back table because that's one of the for sale ones. We do have a couple of big knives out here, a couple of bodegas and a one of one Bagatti. So I got this from a good friend of mine. Took about a year of begging him to sell it. And finally he hit me up one day and said, Hey, if you're still interested, I'm ready to sell it. So I bought it and absolutely loved it. It's my favorite bodega. And this was my, my daily carry for a long time because I didn't have a lot of knives at that point. This is still my dress knife. Whenever I wear a suit, this is what I'm carrying. Okay, it's not the lightest thing I have. This one's significantly lighter, but this one's much thinner. So after getting this one, I had been over to the big factory here in Petaluma a number of times, talking to Mark and Mattia. I begged them. I spent three or four months talking them into making me a matching Bugatti, which is just the thicker version of the Bodega. Everything else is pretty much the same. The blade is bigger, has a compound grind and a double row of fuller. And this is a one of one, which they stamped on the inside there that you can't see because we need a light. One of one down in there, hard to see, but yeah, it's there. So this is a very special knife to me and probably one of those forever keepers just because of 
the fact that this is a matched pair that doesn't exist anywhere else. So I love these two. And they get carried a lot. This guy still gets carried a lot. This one, not so much. But he does get carried. <sighs> How about the Hinder XM24? A lot of people have asked me to sell this one. So, yeah, I, I'll put a price down below. I don't know if I'm really ready to sell it or not. But, hey, if somebody's interested, I, I might be interested, ready to sell. Standard Hinder XM24. I got it in a flip. Uh, I mean, I got it in a trade because I was going to flip it. But then I handled it. I hung out with it for a bit, used it quite a bit, and uh, came to love it. So I don't know. But everybody keeps asking me to sell this one. So maybe now's the time. I'll put a price down below. A steel wheel nutcracker. This I actually won in a raffle or a giveaway from uh, this old sword blade reviews channel. Just a very cool, cool knife. I, yeah, I like this a lot more than I ever thought I would for some reason. Doesn't get carried that much, but it's a very cool knife that I do very much enjoy. Here is the Steelcraft Field Marshal from Big Knives in Damasteel. I got this from Knife Ship Free. They were having a half-off sale for a Black Friday a couple of years ago. I bought this and a couple of bodegas that I ended up giving away. Um, one of the bodegas I gave away to my good friend Random Rob, who has a watch channel and has become a very good friend over the years. So just a lovely blade. And I didn't like this, uh, this style or this shape blade until I got one. My other buddy Remington said, hey, dude, I got one. Give it to you for super cheap. So I bought it. And once I had his, which I still have, um, which I probably should have brought out because I could have sold that one too maybe, but that's okay. Uh, I really liked it. And there's a lot of utilitarian usage for this blade shape. It's very underrated. So that's the big field marshal. Reese Wieland Fatty Slash. This one is absolutely for sale. 3 8 thick blade. 440C. Super crazy sharp. Just a fun, very cool custom knife to have. So I will put a price down below for this guy. Uh, let's talk about TJ Fisher. This is the King Kamehameha. I had a full dress Kamehameha in and did a review on. And then I had um, a Cobra prototype. And I spent a lot of time talking with TJ on the phone. Got to know him pretty well. Kind of interviewed him before I did the um, Cobra release with him. And we kind of... We didn't come up with a price. He came up with a price, told me what the price was going to be, and we agreed on when we, he was going to launch them. So I launched my video a couple days before the pre-order. And then he made the King Kamehameha, and I had to have one because the Kamehameha was a little small for me. So this was one of the first three uh, King Kamehameha's made, and I got this brand new from uh, TJ Fisher, Todd Fisher's son, Todd Jr., Todd Sr., Put those off to the side, right up there, out of the way. How about another watch? This is a Seiko Turtle mod that we did. Random Rob built this. Well, Random Rob came up with the idea. I funded it. And then another buddy of ours, Eric Loomshot, here on Instagram and YouTube, actually did the build. And it's an incredible, incredible build. Took a limited edition turtle, took it out of the case, put it into an SKX case, uh, and built it all up. I have the turtle case, so it can be put back to original. No turtles were hurt in this build. And then I bought a Crafter Blue orange strap for it. And yeah, it's totally, totally awesome. Um, 
But I have thought about selling this one. I don't know yet. If somebody's interested, hit me up. I'm not going to put a price on this one down there, but if somebody's interested, this one could be for sale. Okay, put that off to the side. Kaiser GTI. This is just a cool knife. This was given to me by a viewer, John, a friend of mine. Doesn't get a lot of pocket time, but it is a cool knife nonetheless. Super thick liners. Tip up or tip down. Just a, you know, a great blade. Super solid. The mirrored finish blade isn't exactly my style. I would have preferred stone washed or, you know, tumbled or something. But other than that, it's a very cool knife for sure. The USB OTF from Boker Knives. I just got this from Wild About Sporting Goods when I bought a couple of uh, AD20s from Demco. Um, when I called him, called up Gil to pay for my AD20s, I told him, dude, you got to add on the price of this USB OTF because it's just so freaking cool. It's under two inches, so it's California legal. I have not put it on my keychain yet, but I may just put this on my keys and carry it in the pocket. It's super, super cool. And they're only like 60 bucks. But if you get them from Wild About Sporting Goods, use a promo code that I have, and I'll put that in the description, you get 10% off. So how can you really go wrong with 10% off 60 bucks? I mean, it's just such a cool, fun knife. How about a quick flashlight? This is a Big Knives Deadwood Customs collaboration. They only made about 10 of these. Very cool. Got a Dragon Driver. I'm not a flashlight expert. This one has green LEDs. Um, it's pretty cool. I don't carry this one a lot, but I am a huge big fan and have a rather large big collection. So the fact that there was a collaboration, I absolutely wanted one. So yeah, Deadwood Customs built them, sent them off to Big Knives where they um, did all the engraving, the laser etching and all that stuff. And then I think they went back to Deadwood to assemble and whatnot. Not sure on all the timing of that, but very cool uh, light. It's kind of on the heavier side, so that's why I don't carry it all that often. I actually carry this Okluma 90% of the time. This is my go-to light. All right, what else we got here? We've got, uh, how about a Direware? Solo V5. Very cool. I love the recurved Tonto blade. Carbon fiber is totally my jam. Nice titanium Luxide. Super, super cool. Um, some people have asked about this for sale, so this could be for sale if somebody was interested. I'll put a price down below, just because, you know, I'm trying to pare down my collection. I really am. I've, there's some watches that I've been looking at that I want to buy. I've kind of gotten into watches quite heavily, which is a mistake. I didn't listen to Nick Shabazz, but here, here we are, okay? Speaking of watches... A quick look at the Tag Heuer. This was my first dive into the luxury watch brand. And this is not super luxury, but these are, you know, I got a deal on this, but this is a $2,500 watch, give or take. It's a little smudged up there. Um, but this was my first dive into that entry level luxury watch. And if you follow my channel, you know where that went. I've got the Rolex, Air King, I've got the Omega, Planet Ocean, I've got the Omega Seamaster. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of different Rolexes now. Uh, yeah, it's just crazy. All right, just a couple more here. We got the Bodega, Herringbone Damascus, carbon fiber inlays with G10 scale. Totally totally cool and a one-off of course the titanium lock bar this is one of my favorite knives also super lightweight uh yeah this one gets carried a lot as well 
It's a very cool knife. All right, I think we're down to the bad boys. Phil Harvey Gladius and Phil Harvey Peacemaker. Dude, do I need to zoom back out on these? Oh, we got one more. And the Frank Fisher battle. So how about the Phil Harvey Gladius? This thing is ginormous. I mean, I'm at normal zoom here. I can't even zoom in on this thing because it's just too big. To give you a size example here of the pocket clip, here it is next to the Sharpie. The clip is almost as long as the Sharpie. This thing is massive. I got this from a from a buddy too. We did a trade cash deal and whatnot and yeah, love it. This one I actually had um, a couple of issues with when I first got it, but Phil and I worked out the details uh, and it was good to go. In dealing with Phil during the the couple of issues I had with this, we talked about a peacemaker and if he was going to make any more. And he said he'd build me one. So he did. <laughs> just, let me move this out of the way. See if I can get this in to the picture at full screen by itself. It barely fits in the field of view. Uh, the Sharpie is smaller than the blade, basically. It's the same size as the blade. Yeah, this is crazy. This is a log splitter. This one did have a problem, and I had to send it back to Phil, and he had to rebuild to some stuff because there was there was just an issue. But Phil is super awesome to deal with. This is almost a scary knife to close, guys. I'm not even going to lie. Because it's such a heavy blade and it's a razor sharp of D2. Hand rub satin finish. Now this is a little smudged up because it's a fingerprint magnet. It's terrible. But look at that detail. Hand rubbed on a blade of this size is just crazy. 3 eighths thick. Just absolutely bonkers. And I did a full video on this one too. If you want all the specs, how much time he has into it and all that, go check out that video. And I believe last but not least, the Frank Fisher battle. So let's move Phil's Peacemaker out of the way and let's go Todd Fisher Sr., Todd Fisher Jr., and Frank Fisher. This is the Fisher trifecta. And I am honored and ecstatic to have these three. And I'll be honest, this gets the most pocket time is the, the Archangel. The battle gets the second most pocket time out of these three. And the King Kamehameha gets the least amount of pocket time out of these three, just because of how wide it is here in the butt when it's in your pocket. It has the smoothest action on bearings. Super, not drop shut, but wow. These ones, you got to give them a shake. You can see a lot of the same DNA. There's no questioning who made these. And the craftsmanship, I, I, I did a full video on this recently because it is my holy grail. And, and honestly, the battle changed me. I have not looked at knives the same since. Nothing could compare. Nothing could dethrone this in my collection. And I've not really wanted to buy anything since. I bought the OTF, the little USB OTF, sure. And I brought a couple of... Uh, Demco AD 20s, the titanium versions. But one of them I already sold, and the other one I'm just going to hold on to for now, but I may sell that too. Because I don't know, I don't love the AD 20s. I like having them, 
I have currently now a G10 version and a titanium version of the 8020s, but I don't love them. They're cool. They're great, but eh. So there you go, guys. Just a, let's zoom back out again, get rid of the whole table. Um, just a little bit of my collection. I figured I'd just do a quick walk around for the people that were not at Blade to show you some of my collection and just kind of talk about some stuff and ramble for a few minutes. So there you go, guys. Let me know what you think down below. I will put uh, some prices down below on a couple of the things that I mentioned that could be for sale. Um, but there you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you stuck around till the end. And uh, have yourselves a great day. And for those of you that are at Blade, congrats. I hope you bought some good stuff. I can't wait to see and hear all about it. Thanks a lot, guys. I greatly appreciate your time. Have yourselves a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.